sounded fun. We've come by to look at one of the more unusual airplanes on the field. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Robert Bosley here. And what are we standing in front of this year? This is a 1914 Marine Sonnure Model L. Wow, that's a mouthful. But, uh, you know, I couldn't possibly keep track of all the airplanes that you brought to the market. How many of them have there been over the years? This is our 26th year at Oshkosh and Sun and Fun and our 26th new design. I we, guess that ought to be easy to remember, one per year, huh? We bring a new airplane every year. I don't know how you keep that pace up. How do you do that magic, Robert? Yeah, it's, it's getting harder as I get older, I know that for sure, but uh, we just, uh, Again, we've got a reputation to uphold a new airplane every year, so we make sure we get it done. Well, so. you're doing it to it. So the Moraine Saulnier Company has been around a long time, but they must they built this back in the year you just mentioned. Correct. This this was 1914. It, this aircraft actually started out as a scout aircraft. Uh, in the early days of World War One, they would go look for observation stuff. Uh, they eventually mounted a machine gun on the airplane. They started shooting at each other. And the unique thing about this airplane, they mounted a bullet deflector on the propeller. This was and before. That's what, that's what this black yeah. thing here is. This, this was before the synchronized machine gun. So the, the gun would shoot. If the propeller is in the way, it would ricochet off the uh, deflector if all went well. Yeah, that doesn't sound dangerous at all, does it? I don't think it worked very well. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it actually, they were successful. We shot a few aircraft down using it. Uh, this aircraft actually ended up the brain got shot down. Or, or, I, rumors say it run out of fuel, shot down. Who knows? But was captured by the enemy. Uh, the, this concept was shown to Anthony Fokker, and 48 hours later, he invented the synchronized machine gun. Wow, so, is that right? <laughs> it started the synchronized machine gun. So Mr. Correct. Fokker was quick on the quick on his toes in those days, wasn't Correct, it? Correct, yes. Well, that's pretty amazing. So, now, this you've, you've even done the authentic kind of paint job to make it look like it's really old and crusty here, but it's not. This is a new airplane. Correct. Uh, tell me what the process is in making it look this way. Uh, it's actually done in the paint process. You, you put down a two light coats of a, of a second color of paint, a, a darker version of what you're going to do, and then you come back and you apply the top coat, but you don't put a heavy coat on. You intentionally let you see the spotting, the streaking come through. It, it takes a little bit of practice to get down the process, but uh, it really makes the airplane appear to be, you know, quite old. You know? Oh yeah, I'm looking over your shoulder here up at the wing, and man, it looks like this has been through through the mill here, and yet I know it's new, but because you said it was new. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of pilot is interested in building these airplanes, Robert? Well, this particular airplane, this can be qualified, or does qualify as a light sport aircraft, so that's important. Uh, this particular airplane, we designed it for, for a few things in mind. We wanted a very easy to handle entry level tail wheel airplane, where most of the World War I airplanes can be somewhat challenging. I've understood that. This, this one's not? This, this one's one easy not. to fly? It's got a wide, long stance, long stance on the gear. Uh, it's got good visibility being a parasol you can see out of it. Lots of wing area and it flies relatively slow. Stall speed yeah, it's a great big wing. I'm getting looking over your shoulder here. But wow. Uh, so tell me the stall again. I interrupted 30, you. 32 miles an hour in the stall. It cruises pretty slow. It's about 63, 64 miles an hour. So it accidentally backs into the ultralight category <laughs> on, on top speed. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Because it is a kind of a large aircraft. Yeah, how, how much wing area is there? Uh, I don't know the area right off. I believe it's 190-something, yeah, just it's shy a, of 200 square feet. A that's big a, wing, yeah. yeah, no question yeah. about it. And uh, what are, what's powering it here? Uh, this is the Rotec Radial R2800, which is 110 horsepower. And how does that make it perform? You said speeds, but how about to take off and take climb? Take off and climb is like fairly brisk on this airplane. Yeah. Uh, you know, we haven't calibrated the numbers yet. We don't know those numbers. But uh, Have you flown this one? This airplane's just hopped down the runway so far. We're going to finish you know, all the registration, take care of it. All right. And then what will people expect if they say, man, that's a, that's a piece of history there. i gotta, I got to build one. What's, what's involved? Uh, the kit will be available uh, by Oshkosh time. Uh, it will be introduced at $89.95. Everything you need to build the airframe. It will not include the engine instruments or prop. And so what could somebody get it in the air for? I know that can vary widely, but give us an approximate number that folks remember. Prices change. Check with the factory later. We'll give you the web address and you can know the number then. But today, about what, what it would take to get it in the air. With the Rotec radio, you're going to be in the mid-20s. If you want to use something like the uh, VW conversions, you'd probably be uh, in the $15,000 range. Well, I mean, it's a very inexpensive airplane, then. If you want to fly around in a little piece of history here, 
or one of your many other 25 airplanes, all of which show you that's kind of a theme for you, isn't it? Correct. So, I mean, the name of the company, as you can see directly on your shirt here, implies aerodrome, is there, or aerodrome is a term we don't use anymore, but that's because it harks back to the beginning of aviation. Correct. Yeah, the aerodrome was a large circle that they would fly off of, unlike we fly off of most people fly off airports nowadays. Well, I got to tell you, on that particular subject, I used to work for the BRS Parachute Company up in South St. Paul, Minnesota. And there's a straight runway down it now, but if you go out and kick around the grass, you find pavement, asphalt underneath it. It was one of those big circle Spirit runways, truck. which in a way, I mean, think about that. If it doesn't take a long runway, it's always into the wind. Correct. You just right. land into the wind, kind of like we do in our ultralights. Yep. So very cool. Uh, what is the, of all your many airplanes, now this was a 1910 iteration, what's the newest of the old airplanes that you make replicas of? The newest of the old airplanes. <laughs> well, I mean, you're going from uh, 1910 to 1918. 1918. 1918. <laughs> uh, that, that's the Fokker D8. That, okay. that was kind of the the pinnacle of World War One aviation, and, and that's we stopped at the 1918. All right. Uh, so they're all in that I'll, era. I'll, I'll then. Take that back. I'm wrong. We did the Spirit of St. Louis, which was 1926. Oh my goodness, so, so that's so we new. We did do then. a brand new one, yeah, way out of our league normally. Well, that's yes. kind of fun. I love yeah. that you do the, these older designs, that you're kind of keeping that interest. Of, uh, the interest is there anyway, yes, I know. Yes. Uh, but, you know, how, how would somebody go about this if it wasn't for someone like you? Tell me about the kit process. Uh, what does somebody get in a kit to build, let's say, this Moraine Saulnier? Well, very typical with all of our kits. The, anything that requires welding is pre-done. Anything that requires machining is pre-done. Uh, most of the gusset plates and everything all pre-cut on a CNC plasma cutting table. So uh, theoretically, we've done anything, or we, we basically have done anything that takes more than a basic hand tool to produce. So in, if it takes more than that, we've already done it for you. Just, just think about that. If it has to be drilled and tapped, we've drilled and tapped. If it has to be welded, we've welded. It needs to be machined, we've machined it. So we leave up all the basic stuff up to, to the builder. So if you can just do simple hand bending, filing, grinding, we leave that up to you. So. And how many hours in would somebody invest to build this particular airplane? Now this one's brand new for you, but you can probably still give me an idea. Yeah, I actually, we had 288 hours in building the prototype. That's it? That's it, yeah. That's it. So I gotta say, it's kind of an interesting uh, uh, conf uh, conflict almost. 1918 to 19, 1910 to 1925 airplanes, and you're doing this on a CNC plasma machine. Yes. That sort of sounds like uh, you designed this airplane on an iPhone or something. I don't yeah. know. And uh, but it seems pretty amazing. What has been the uh, response to the airplane here at the show, Robert? Well, it's been overwhelming. People just don't realize that you can get these antique airplanes. And with what we do, we we're turning them into modern flyable airplanes. You know, they were they look old. Marginal. They fly new. Yeah, they, that's it. They look old. They fly new. They, the old airplanes were very marginal in performance and controllability. And we've, we've got new airfoils and modern, all modern materials to build the airplane. So again, we've got just what looks like an old airplane that flies like a, a modern light airplane. Do you, I don't know, I'm going to spring this on you. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question, so uh, do the best you can with it. But how many how many kits have been sold and how many are flying? Do you uh, know that number? I, I don't track that number, but I know we have approximately 600 kits that have been out there. As far as flying-wise, we're probably in the approaching 100 airplanes. Okay. At this point. So they take a little while to do. How long, what's the build time on this particular one or one like it? Uh, most hours? of our kits build in about 400 hours. This one we actually spent 288 on. Now that's, but that's you. That's me, yeah. And you I guys, the average obviously builder. you can crank these out at more than one a year, so Correct. you're the exception to the rule. Yeah, well the average builders, I just tell people expect two years from the time you start the project. Years. And that's working sometimes on the weekend, maybe one evening a night, you know, not, not missing the family life type of thing. Just every now and again hitting the garage and getting a few things done. So. Great stuff. Well, so many airplanes, so little time, but uh, where do we find out more information about the 26 different airplanes? at one a year. Well, you just join our look at our website is uh, www.aerodromeaeroplanes.com. All right, we'll find out more there. We've had videos and reporting on this airplane and other airplanes from Aerodrome before. You can find lots of that and plenty of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Robert Bosley and myself here at Sun and Fun. Thank you.